What's up, man? Welcome back to the channel. We still trucking in J's. I'm Devin. If you seen by the thumbnail or by this clip I'm putting in, it finally happened, man. It, uh, well, I wouldn't say finally. I wasn't looking forward to it, but you know, with trucking, you figure you know it's gonna happen eventually, man. Big Bertha put me down, man. Turn the air down a little bit. I'm still using the air in November, but yeah, man. Big Bertha put me down. It's really something that could have been avoided, but I take all the blame for it. And let me tell you what happened. So. A few weeks ago, I actually, um, you know, we had the same load I'm actually on right now. I'm going to show you about it, give you all the details on it. The same load I'm on right now, and, you know, we always use Amazon out of Jacksonville to get back to the, you know, to the house or close to the house, going to normally the Charleston area. So, um, dropped off at a post office there, and it all started. The dock plate wasn't working. So, you know, it came up, but it wouldn't, you know, the part wouldn't flip out like it, like it does to get on the back and kind of level the truck so you can take the pallets on and off. So the little piece that flipped up, you know, I've, I've lifted up, but it didn't stay. So, you know, it started to come back down. So I knew to get my hands out of the way. So, you know, I tried it again to see if I just didn't pull it up hard enough, but it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't stay. So, you know, I'm letting it back down knowing that it's not working. And some kind of way, man, I don't know if I thought I moved my hand, but anyway, I didn't. So my finger got, you know, it kind of nicked my finger, well not nick my finger, kind of it smashed my finger between the, the top part of the dock level and the actual dock plate. So that's where it all started and it, it all went wrong from there. At that point, my finger bleeding, you know, I got the pallets off and then I did get, you know, a couple band-aids from, you know, from the post office. I went in and got a couple. But then, so now all I'm thinking is, man, I got one more stop after this. Let me hurry up and drop that off and I'm on the way home. Um, so from there, I'm on the way home trying to get home as fast as I can, not even paying attention to, um, you know, how much how much gas I got. Right now, I'm, my finger thumping like on the cartoons when they smash it with a hammer and it's, you know, pulsing and thumping like that. That's all I could feel. And it was just getting you know, getting worse. So I'm thinking my finger, fingertip had to be, you know, broken. I'm going to put some pictures in so you can see what happened. So... In a hurry to get home, not paying attention to how much gas. Usually we'll time it just right, so we'll need to fill up when we get home closer to the house. I like to fill up and you know park my truck. So, not paying attention to how many miles I I drove. I know I can get you know 600 miles on it, but I didn't went 632 miles or so, or maybe even even more than that. But anyway, I parked the truck instead of going to get diesel like I usually do before I park the truck for the day. So I was just trying to uh, hurry up so I can go to urgent care or med care so that I can go ahead and, you know, have my finger take, you know, x-ray on my finger, make sure it ain't broke because the way it was throbbing, it wasn't no, I just had to come get myself cleaned up, man, so I ain't bleed out. <laughs> so anyway, parked the truck, you know, and got my finger cleaned up. It ain't broken or nothing like that, but let me, I put a picture on what it looked like and now this is what I'm, this is what I look like right now. <laughs> no, for real. But the, uh, you know if you can see it, the fingernail came off, man. I'm out here with this club finger now. Fingernail gone, look like ET finger now. But anyway, that's what happened and started it all. Ended up running the truck out of gas. Um, knew better than that not to run it too low because, of course, the sediments at the bottom of the tank, you know, started to get sucked up. So anyway, the next day, no, later that day, I had to put some diesel in the truck. To even crank it to get to the gas station did that the thing about it is everything was fine you know it crunk up after that i got diesel I picked up a load the next day and fountain in went to savannah came back home topped my tank back off went to fountain in the next day and i had a load going to virginia on the way to virginia that's when i uh i got a check engine light um you know with the triangle it kind of was going on and off but no engine performance was you know, uh, change and everything was you know, riding regular. But I was like, I'm gonna check it out once I stop. So I got to the destination, got all the way to um, to Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, and you know, parked the truck for the for the day. But that's when I checked the code. Like in the previous video, Nick showed you how to you know check the code. Did some research on what the code was saying, and it was a um, a low fuel pressure is um, the code that I was getting. So I figured it had to come from me running it out of diesel. Um, so, and I'm thinking maybe, you know, I need to change the filters or whatever. Since it wasn't, you know, affecting the engine performance and I was still able to drive normal, 
I was gonna wait until we got back to until I got back to the house to get everything checked out to see, you know, maybe I just need to change the filters and, and everything like that, then it, it'll be fine. So that next day, it was fine. I had to actually drop off that drop off my load that morning, dropped off my load, booked another load on my way to pick up that load. That's when, hey man, it just it just all went downhill from there. So that's when you know I actually was on the side of the road from the picture that you uh, seen earlier. So that's when I was on the side of the road and basically, long story short, I ended up having to leave my truck in Virginia. The next day, I ended up changing the filters on the side of the road. It did let me go up to 50, but it was still giving the same you know low low fuel pressure. So, oh, and on the way to Virginia, the cold the um, engine light came on. But then it went off, so like once again, I didn't have any problems, no symptoms, just went on and off. But then that next day is when when it went downhill, and I I did make it to a shop, and that shop it was the uh, Norfolk Tro Truck Center in Virginia, in Norfolk, Virginia. That was a Thursday that I was able to drop my I had to drop my truck off. They said they wouldn't even be able to um, do a diagnostics on it until that Tuesday, that following Tuesday. So that's why I had no choice but to um, leave my truck. I actually flew, um, I flew back home. I did a round trip. So if this happened to y'all, make sure you go ahead and do a round trip ticket. Um, it was cheaper. It was like 575, you know, for a round trip versus one way, it's gonna be like $400. So I knew I was gonna have to come back and get it. So I went ahead and booked a round trip ticket um, to get to the point, they fixed it. Um, it was actually, they did a diagnostic, so I only had to pay the diagnostic fee, which was like four hundred and something dollars, like four seventy-five. And during that diagnostic, they found, you know, based on the code, that I, you know, based on me telling them that I ran it um, out of out of diesel, and the and the low fuel pressure code that they get, they they checked and they were able to clear out a water trash. He said, you know, in the fuel line, you know, from that. So definitely could have been avoided. Um, so it ended up costing a good bit of money to get that taken care of. Of course, you know, with the me changing the filters on the side of the road, had to buy new filters, had to um, pay for the airplane ticket, and then pay for them to fix it. it was avoidable, but honestly, I couldn't. Man, I couldn't think about how much gas I had at that point. I just had to come back to the house and get patched up. Um, but yeah, you see my finger. Anyway, that's that's what's been happening. But yeah, man, we this is, I'm actually on that same Florida load again. That, that we always do two or three times a week. So I'm gonna go show you that in a minute. Give me a second. Show you what I got on the truck. Yeah. Just these four pallets picked up in Union, South Carolina, going to Pinellas Park. I'm gonna go over the numbers um, tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits for today. I think it's like 3,000. You yeah, know, 3,000 pounds. I tried to find um, a partial to go with it. Couldn't find anything. Not a whole lot of partials going to Florida that, you know, the part of Florida that we're going to. We've seen some going to you know, deeper down in Miami, but you know, I'm not going that far. But I'll pick up with y'all in the morning, man. Who are you? You go Nick Red Day, man. Oh, yeah, I see Nick Red Day. You got him working, man. All right, y'all, so as you can see, I just got unloaded here in Pinellas Park, Florida. 
Um, the lady unloaded me. She didn't have an attitude today, so that was good. Sometimes she have a little attitude, um, like she don't feel like working today, but I ain't got nothing to do with that. Just go ahead and unload me so I can go. You won't break my soul. Nick said she always nice to him, so I don't get it. I mean, hey, I'm, hey, how you doing? Thank you. See you next time. One time she was like, how are you here every day? And this is coming from South Carolina. But, you know, sometimes the load was coming back to back. And if Nick got something to do the next day, he'll go pick it up, bring it to me in Jacksonville. He'll run Amazon back. And then I'll take it the next morning and then come back to Jacksonville and then get Amazon back. So that's what I'm going to do um, tonight. Go ahead and catch me Amazon load. I already booked it. A little $2 a mile just to pay for gas to get me back. But I'll be ready to pick up something new on, on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, the numbers for this load, it was 1550 567 miles so um right at two dollars and 73 cents a mile so not bad but like i said we we in and out but yeah man uh keep grinding and we'll see y'all at the top till next time man we trucking the jays i'm Devin. peace